So now most of the connectors are connected. This is for the USB. This is for your front panel lights and switches. And then your audio. Now the next thing we're going to do is connect the power supply to the motherboard. And this is the power supply uh, plug. And this is what you connect to it. The good thing about this power supply connector is that you will never go wrong with it because it will not fit if you put it uh, backwards so that's a good thing also uh, you can if you notice here on this motherboard there's a sticker there that says uh, 24 pin or 24 pin connectors because this motherboard works with the old version of the 24 pin and also the I think 30 pin connector like this one so because we're using a 30 pin we'll just have to remove this sticker and then plug it in like so until it clicks and then you're done and then there's another plug that you have to connect this also provides power to the motherboard and this goes right there that's it now we're going to plug in the memory uh, warning though or a caution every time you're going to hold a delicate electronic device make sure you ground yourself by touching something metal like this so that no static uh, discharge would discharge would uh, ruin your uh, delicate electronic equipment okay so this RAM goes to this yellow strip right here and also there's a uh, guide so that you can't you won't be able to fit it if you have it backwards okay so there now the memory is connected make sure that this locks into place so that you're sure that it is fastened and mounted properly now the next thing we're going to do is connect the motherboard this is what you call a ZIF or zero insertion force uh, connector because you don't have to force it you just have to let it sit there there's a, a protector or a, a covering that you need to remove when you're ready to install your uh, motherboard if I can only get it. ah there it is see now here is your processor this will go to this slot or this socket right here be very careful when doing this and uh, if you can see right there there's sort of like a guide to tell you what orientation you're going to put the mother the processor and if you can see I don't know if you can see that, that but there's a groove here as well so that you know that that's where you align it so you align it like that and then you have to close this and then lock it in place um, processor is connected to uh, the motherboard the next thing that we're going to do is plug in the or uh, mount the fan and this the right here is your fan and your heat sink make sure that this part touches the motherboard the uh, processor so that heat will properly be uh, dissipated okay so now we have successfully mounted the fan and the heat sink so everything's complete except for the hard disk and the optical drive the DVD so we're gonna go ahead and now do that. that the optical drive connected with its power supply and also the hard drive but the power supply is not connected yet so that's what I'm going to do now and also I'm going to connect the optical drive with this IDE cable to this one right here it, as you can see it's colored blue and this one is colored blue as well so you really won't get lost with that and I'm going to use this red cable for the serial ATA 
and you, if you can see there's a red uh, connector there so as you can see it's a uh, dummy proof we got everything connected to the motherboard and the mount motherboard mounted to the casing we got here the serial ATA for the uh, hard disk the IDE connector for the uh, optical drive we got the heat sink and the processor we got the RAM so everything's connected even the front panel next thing we're going to do is unbox the LCD monitor. There are about three hours of assembly and installation. The computer is now up and running. I said earlier that I'm going to use Ubuntu but unfortunately Ubuntu is not popular in the Philippines so I used Windows XP instead. There it is. And that's my take on tech.